Welcome back to Daily Planet Goes to Brazil. We couldn't come to Brazil without talking about Oscar Niemeyer, Brazil's most famous architect. His deceptively simple, curvaceous concrete structures were often described as futuristic. The Contemporary Art Museum here in Niterói, across the harbor from Rio de Janeiro, uh, is sometimes described as a flying saucer something Niterói took as a compliment. This building is a feat of engineering in its own right. And if some engineers have their way, Brazil is going to get even more futuristic. A typical train in Rio. Crowded, noisy, and slow. Half a million people travel this way every day. But this train could become a relic of the past if it gives way to a technology inspired by the wild. The Maglev Cobra. For urban commuters, it could be the train of the future. No wheels, no railway ties, just sheer magnetic force. This train appears to float on air as it curves like a snake through the urban landscape. Right now, it's just a high-tech dream. But these two engineers from Rio de Janeiro's Federal University have devoted their careers to making the Maglev Cobra fly. Eduardo David loves trains. As a 25-year veteran of Rio's rail system, he knows they're the key to any city's transportation scheme. But he also knows traditional trains still use up too much energy. And it's time for a radical change. The wheel has already helped humankind for more than 2,000 years. In the third millennium, it's time for levitation, magnetic levitation. It's like flying on the ground. Magnetic levitation, or maglev, trains are actually suspended over the track, kept there by magnetic forces which guide and propel the trains. And talk about propel. First developed in Germany, maglevs are fast. The first commercial maglev system runs between Shanghai's airport and a main station at speeds up to 431 kilometers an hour. In Japan, maglev test runs exceed 580 kilometers an hour. But in Brazil, they're designing the next generation of maglevs, slower for inner city travel, but 43 times more energy efficient than a regular train. The secret? Using a super magnet called a superconductor. This is the superconductor that makes our train fly. The superconductor provides the magnetic forces that drive the train. That's the magic and the challenge. Engineering professor Hichard Stefan knows what it takes to make superconductors work. It takes cold, real cold. So superconductors are kept inside this refrigeration box called a cryostat. But first, to develop their special magnetic qualities, they must be cooled by liquid nitrogen, kept at a precise temperature, much colder than a winter night in Moose Jaw, a mere minus 200 degrees Celsius. It's cheap, it's no polluting. Liquid nitrogen is in fact a magical substance. The rail is covered with regular magnets, which act as a kind of magnetic mirror, repelling the superconductor, which always hovers above the track at the same distance. And as you take the superconductor and put it here over the magnetic hay, it levitates. And I can just tip it and it will go where I want. As long as the temperature is low, as you'll see, it's like the Cinderella story. The magic power is lost after midnight or after the temperatures goes higher. So why not just use the existing technology, like Shanghai's Transrapid train? Here, the magnetic currents that propel the train are generated by electricity. Constantly shifting electric currents that pull the train creates its own set of problems. It depends on sensors that measure the position of the ball Professor Stefan demonstrates how the levitating ball, representing the train, behaves when it's not being controlled. It fluctuates and requires an external control system to stay stable. The advantage of the superconductor, in my point of view, is that it's simpler because we don't need sensors, actuators, or a control system to maintain our vehicle stable. And for urban transport, it's stability, not speed, that they're after. 
Maglev Cobra cars are shorter, lighter, and smoother. The conventional train vibrates a lot, all the time, while the Maglev glides above the surface, like a sliding snake, so there's no vibration problem. As for the tracks, the great advantage of this system is that it won't be necessary to build a new line for the Maglev Cobra. It'll be enough to install a magnet between the rails with a big cost reduction. The Maglev will still need a little boost of energy to start off or speed up, but Eduardo David thinks he has the solution. Using solar energy, Maglev can be an answer to the problems humankind will face in the coming years. Imagine an almost frictionless, smooth and clean way of getting around. Will the train that flies like an airplane and slithers like a snake be the answer? I believe that in the new center that we are living now, superconductors and magnets will change the world. Well, there you have it, a glimpse into Brazil's future and its very vibrant present. This is an incredible place. From Niterói's Contemporary Art Museum, I'm Ed Robertson. Thank you for watching. Daily Planet goes to Brazil.